Welcome to a special breaking news edition of Straight Talk, where we bring you emerging information about a recent study that found some issues with disinfectant dispensers in healthcare settings. The findings raise critical concerns about the reliability of automated systems and their impact on infection control. Our expert today will help unpack the study's results and explore strategies for improving disinfectant best strategies. So to do this and to dig into this issue, I welcome Julie Nakos, Director of National Accounts, Jansan EVS at PDI. Julie, welcome. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me today. It's a pleasure. Well, let's get right into this. This is important information. Can you give us an overview of this study and what it means for those watching our program today? As a former EVS leader, this is a topic I'm very passionate about. And the more I learn, the more studies I read, the more I want to share these findings and share solutions. So in this study, they were performing culture studies on surfaces and found a high rate of surface contamination post-discharge cleaning. And if you're properly cleaning and disinfecting, you would not see these high rates post-cleaning. So the results caused some concern and they conducted evaluations of the automated chemical dispensers. So Dr. Donsky and his colleagues did a study in 10 hospitals. They looked at the automated chemical dispensers by evaluating the diluted liquid coming out of the dispenser, as well as the in-use product the EVS workers were using that day to disinfect. I think this is the first study I've seen where they're actually testing the liquid the housekeepers were using as well, which I think is great. They looked at three different dispensers and uh, concentrated liquids, two quaternary ammonias and a parasitic acid hydrogen peroxide dispenser. They used scientific testing to measure the parts per million of the formulation. And in total, they looked at 107 dispensers and 80 in-use samples. This is a really good sample size and product mix to prove their outcomes. Now, Julie, you mentioned the word concerns. So what is most alarming about all this and what surprised you the most? Yeah, I would say the results are concerning to, to say the least. Overall combined results were 29 of the 107 dispenser tests that they did dispensed lower or no concentration at all. And 15 of those 29 had no chemical concentration at all. That means the housekeepers that were getting their solution out of that dispenser that day, that week, that month, or essentially cleaning with water. Now, if you look at just the parasitic acid hydrogen peroxide dispensers, they had 45 samples here, and only nine of those had the correct amount of concentration. Four had lower than expected, and six, again, had no detectable disinfectant at all. 26 actually had higher than expected concentration levels. Now, while these may have been properly disinfecting, there is some needed evaluation to see if the higher level poses any risk to the EVS workers. Now, let's look at the in-use solution. As I said, this is where they look at the liquid disinfectant that the EVS workers were using to disinfect that day within the hospital. So of those 80 in-use samples, 27 EVS carts had lower than expected concentration and 14 employees had no detectable disinfectant. So those housekeepers were cleaning that day, again, with basically a water solution. One worker even admitted not changing their solution for days. Interestingly, this is not the first time that a study has found similar results. In 2009, the Canadian Journal of Infection Prevention evaluated hydrogen peroxide dispensers, found similar failures. In 2016, Dr. Boyce studied uh, did a study evaluating clot binding. And as a result, they also found, uh, they looked at the chemical dispensers. And in this facility, they had 33 dispensers and not one of those 33 dispensers was properly disinfecting the quaternary ammonium solution. And all of them were diluting lower than expected parts per million. So in conclusion, sadly, even with the best efforts of the hardworking employees, their tools could be failing them, which is always a concern. All of that is scary information. You you assume the equipment, the products, the disinfectants are working, protecting health. What's the where's the breakdown in this? What happened after all that's all there to protect people? Yeah, there can be many factors. So water pressure and flow affects how the chemical gets mixed and comes out of the dispenser. General age and maintenance of the equipment and human error can all be a factor. 
I simply believe these machines are an outdated process and many facilities have just assumed this is what you use and this is how you get your disinfectants. But in reality, there are much better options today than there were previously available and facilities, hospitals specifically, need to explore more advanced clinical and operational products. Ready to use wipes have been around for over 20 years. In fact, PDI created the first EPA registered hard surface disinfecting wipe in 1988. Ready to use wipes are the industry standard for nursing disinfecting, but EVS has not kept up with the times. And this study is just another example of the need to, for EVS to review their practices and for infection preventionists and leaderships to support their needs. So what I'm hearing is there's an attitude of this is how we've always done it. So yeah. we keep doing it. Okay. You talked about human error in this a little bit already. So if you want to expand on that, that would be good. But could faulty dispensers be contributing to the spread of hospital acquired infections? Do you see that? Yeah, I mean, the simple answer is is yes, right? If your dispenser fails to properly dis dispense the correct amount of disinfectant, then that disinfectant will be less effective at killing the pathogens on the surface, especially the more challenging to kill pathogens. These will get missed and can spread to other patients. Although the issue is greater than just the dispensers, in my opinion, that entire liquid and wipe combination poses several opportunities to improperly disinfect. First, as we know, the dispenser can fail to properly dilute the disinfectant. Then when you introduce a wipe to the liquid, it could be a cotton cloth, a reusable microfiber, a disposable microfiber, you're adding another possible breakdown. Not all wipes are made the same. The laundering process can fail to remove pathogens, allowing for possible reintroduction to the environment. And if using a quaternary ammonium solution, quat binding can occur where some of the quat gets trapped inside the cloth, not allowing for the full concentration to get to the surface. It's complicated, and if not done per perfectly, it could lead to the spread of hospital-acquired infections. So this study is out. We're talking about it. Thank you for what you're sharing with us. Hospitals that have this study, how should they respond when they identify a situation that, that we're talking about? Yeah, I think this study should definitely bring the conversation to the top. And I would suggest working with your infection preventionist, uh, your manager or leaders in your facility and identify potential ready to use wipes options to trial. I always suggest using the COF model. This stands for clinical, operational and financial. It's a great tool to assess all your products. Let's start by clinical, right? It's important you're using a product that has the necessary clinical claims for your facility, which can depend based on the type of facility you're cleaning. In a hospital, using an intermediate level disinfectant with key claims like C. Oris, norovirus, and C. diff is important to ensure you have a product that has broad coverage for the pathogens that you most commonly find in hospitals. Operations, it's as simple as it sounds, but this is a big one. It covers many things from ease of use to compatibility, reducing human error, simplifying training and education, and essentially is the product improving the overall operation of your team. Financial, right? The money, the cost. This is not always, is it going to cost me more, but understanding the financial impact. If there's a savings, we know that always helps get those changes moving forward quicker, but cost isn't so black and white. So it's important that when you're looking at the cost, you're comparing an apples to apples and using a financial analysis to make sure you're fairly looking at the potential cost implications. So we work with our customers to make sure not only is the um, co cost analysis accurate, but making sure that they're accessing the best GPO price available to them and ensuring the best distributor partner to deliver the goods at the best price. Can you expand on what PDI can do to help in this situation? Yeah, PDI, we take a lot of pride in being a trusted advisor. We provide our customers with infection prevention solutions that help reduce the chance of hospital-acquired infections. PDI is the market leader in healthcare for pre-saturated ready-to-use wipes. We create all our formulations from concept to approval, and we truly believe that ready-to-use wipes are the best solution for daily and terminal disinfection. We eliminate the risk of improper disinfection due to dispenser issues or clot binding. 
And when we create our wipes, we spend a lot of time making sure our formulations and our applicators that wipe work together perfectly. We've proven our wipes will do as they are proved to do each time you pull a wipe and disinfect a surface. It's simple, pull, wipe, and toss. Take this risk seriously. Reach out to your local PDI rep, get some samples, find the right ready to use wipe to meet your facility's needs. Thank you.